Hey musky anglers, welcome to Joel's vlog number three. Hey, today we're gonna to talk about downsizing. By the way, when I get a request from you folks that are watching these vlogs and you want a question answered or want a topic covered, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And somebody wrote just recently and said, hey, can you cover, up, cover downsizing? So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna cover downsizing today. There's a, a couple of things to think about when you're downsizing. One of them is triggering fish. And the other one, honestly, is endurance and fatigue. So um, these, these really come into play. It's not only about catching fish, it's also about uh, staying fresh and healthy and in the game for a longer period of time. Now here's where I'm going with this. A few years ago, I had a shoulder injury. So I had to downsize. And as the musky, a lot of this musky population is, of course, we have this new group of people that are, you know, that are in the sport now, they're young and they can throw the big stuff, you know, physically longer than the older guys can. But we have this huge aging population of musky guys that can still stay in the game and really stay with it if you just downsize and you'll still be very effective. As I have proven over the last two years, I, I have downsized because I had this shoulder injury not that long ago. And honestly, you know, I'm in my mid-60s now, so I, I try to pace myself and I to, to stay in the game. And, and when I'm fishing alongside young guys like uh, Tyler Andrews and Chaz Martin and the other guys I fish with, Stephen Paul, I gotta stay. I gotta stay in the game with these guys and, and cast for cast with them. And one of the reasons, one of the ways I do that is with downsizing, and I do it very effectively. So it is a fatigue thing and a physical, you know, stay stay effective in the game by downsizing. And the other one is to trigger fish. <clears throat> Let's move into the triggering fish. I've got several different baits in front of me here that I'm going to pull up. But <clears throat> one of the things is, you know, what's interesting is is uh, let's just talk about fishing blades. You know, when do you downsize, when do you upsize with blades? Well, you know, I, I really like to run and gun. The blade is a run and gun chaser bait, you know, trying to find fish that are hot and, and cover water. And probably nothing does it better. My buddy Chaz Martin just, just recently uh, hit on this. Nothing does it better than a 700 Booker tail. And some of you like to throw a little bit bigger blade, so double eights, that you know that's that's perfect and that you can throw double eights most of us including me can throw double eights pretty much all day long now in many conditions these are this is the bait to throw this is the bait to throw and i use the 700 booker tail you know i i i, I go up and down in in sizes but i i really as, as well as chaz and some of these other guys i'll throw that 700 or eight double eight class bait most of the time so when would i downsize I will downsize when I'm getting short strikes. I will downsize when the fish seems sluggish. You know, are you getting a fish striking short? Are 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 you are, are the fish sluggish overall? Has it been a front that come through? Those are classic times to downsize. So then I'll just what I like to do, by the way, and and here's the third thing, by the way, is follows. If I get a follow on this bait consistently and they're not taking it. And this is the seven inch class bait, the seven or eight inch class bait. If I'm getting follows consistently and they're not taking it or they're striking it short, then I will downsize. But what, I, what I've had really a lot of success with, without changing colors, it's just changing size. So I'll just take the same bait and go down. And this can make a huge difference in triggering follows to strikes. And I've shown this several times on my, on my videos. Check my YouTube channel, you'll see me raise a fish on this bait, immediately snap on this bait, and uh, downsize, the, the classic episode I've got is called Downsizing to Seal the Deal. And you'll see me raise a fish on a seven, catch him on a five. So the 500 Booker tail is not only a all day, you know, stay with it, you know, fatigueless bait, but it also triggers fish that follow. So when I'm running into fish that follow, now, this is really a good factor in clearer water. It's also a factor in fishing pressure. One of the reasons a lot of the guides, for example, in northern Wisconsin, Vilas County area, Chaz Martin, Tyler Andrews, and these guys are so effective with the 500 <clears throat> is because fishing pressure. So, you know, if, they, if they're raising fish on bigger blades and they're not getting them, they start downsizing. And this 500, you know, series Booker Tail and similar lures just kills them in those situations. So when would I upsize on blades? I'll upsize on blades. So we had the 700, now we'll go to the, we'll just go all the way to the 10. 
I'll use this big mag tinsel, these double tens. I can't throw these all day anymore, especially with this shoulder. I can't throw them all day, but I throw them and I catch fish on them. And here's when I do. I will, if I get a hot follow, for example, I've said this before, if I get a hot follow on a topwater bait, I will immediately put a topwater bait down and I'll put it down right after that fish follows. And I will pick the, the blades up, big blades, and throw it on that fish and just hound it, crank it as fast as you can, creating a big bulge, almost breaking the surface and you know, creating that top water look. And I've caught them doing that. And But when I'm just talking about blade against blade, if I'm raising fish and I'm getting, I'm, they seem like they're over aggressive, I will, I will get them more aggressive. They're, they're coming in, they're, they're, they're blowing the water up and they're striking short, but it seems like they really want, they're aggressive and the water's warm and the conditions are good. I'll go with the 10, okay? <clears throat> one of my favorite times to go with the 10, you're going to love this one. One of my favorite times to go with the 10 is when I have a lot of pike. If I'm in a situation where there are tons of pike and I literally want to sort through fish, if I want to avoid catching smaller muskies, if you're in a, in a, in a musky fishery that's got a lot, of, a lot of big numbers and just a handful of big fish in it, you can sort through all those fish and catch the biggest ones with tents. If you're a pike angler and you want to go to big pike water and you want to just eliminate catching the big numbers and messing up your baits and you just want to go, you're just after a big one, this is the way to do it. It's the upsize, is to go to bigger baits. So that's a classic time to go to bigger baits. You find the biggest and most aggressive fish. <clears throat> One of the other things I do with upsizing that has been very effective is I'll go into a spot when I like the conditions. You know, let's say, let's, let's talk about ultimate conditions. Let's talk about uh, full moon period, storm approaching, uh, the weather's on a warming trend, you know, everything's set up. I'm on a big fish spot. I even know there's a big fish in that area. So those are like, okay, those are ultimate I've got, the, I got everything dialed in for, for a big fish is right there. I'm going to throw a big bait on them right away. And here's, 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 where, uh, here's where I'm going with that. There's a couple of spots I fish in Wisconsin as well as in Canada, in Minnesota, Michigan, where there's a big fish in that spot, but there's also other fish in that spot, and there's also a lot of pike on the spot, and there's bass and everything else. I want to throw, I'm going to find the biggest, most aggressive big dominant dude that's in that spot right away. And if you go into a spot fresh, and I learned this bass fishing, by the way, you go into a spot fresh, you throw them the biggest bait first and catch the biggest fish because it's a pecking order thing. And the big, you know, the big dog sitting at the top, the big dog sitting in the right spot when it's active and you want to give the big dog the big bait. So that's a classic time. If the big dog then doesn't, if follow, if follows it, if it just follows it, then we go the other way. If the big dog follows it, come right back on the big dog with a 700. And a lot of times that gets them. And if need be, if need be, and this has happened quite a bit in, in, in uh, Wisconsin waters, then they follow the seven, well, then we give them the five. Okay, so we just keep going down. And, and what you're doing is essentially testing fish. You're just, you're throwing baits on fish that you, you know, you're testing conditions, you're testing. And when you're fishing with your buddies, this is a great time. If you and your buddy or your, two, your buddies or your girlfriend or whatever, you guys are out fishing, father and son, father and daughter, you're out fishing. And somebody's having action on blades. Another good thing to do in the boat is fish complete opposites. One person fishing real small, the other one fishing real big. And when you come through an area, then, you know, you're really giving them, you're giving them the optimum situation and, and choice. And then you're going to find out, you'll, you'll, you'll notice by doing this kind of stuff, you'll really pattern those fish and know what they really want. Now, I want to switch off of blades for a second, and let's kind of finish this thing up with plugs, lures. When do I use a 7-inch shallow reader? When do I use a 5-inch shallow reader? When do I use the Magnum Shallow Reader. I'll try to grab all three of them here without hooking myself. If I keep my hook so sharp, I'm, it's always a dangerous thing. Okay, here's the five. Here's the two big, bigger dogs. <clears throat> I use the seven. I would say the seven, I use the seven as my main lure most of the time. And in fact, the, the video that we're featuring this, this past week, um, I caught the, uh, the, the big Storm Titan on the original seven, right out of the box, okay? I use that bait a lot. It's, if you think about it, the seven inch bait size, you know, in the, in the, in the freshwater world, in the musky world, seven inch perch, you know, 
average to just a little bit bigger bluegill crappie. Seven inch, they you know, muskies love seven inch class lures, six, seven inch bait. They love bait, little bass, little walleyes, <clears throat> suckers that size, they'll just munch on them all day long. And it triggers most of the fish in the system. That's the other thing, too. If you're fishing in waters that have a variety of musky sizes, including big ones, you pretty much can't go wrong with the seven. And I would stay with the seven on these high on these high pressured waters and where there's a lot of pike, I would stay with the seven and I would avoid fishing this bait. This bait really shines when there's a cold front, when you have fishing pressure, when you have a clear water. You know, this bait, this, this five inch class bait has just been deadly in it. So what about the Magnum? The Magnum is again, if you think about the same concept, fishing these big Magnum baits, hey, they're great trolling lures. Whenever I'm trolling, I will most of the time fish with bigger lures uh, just to give those fish a big profile right off the bat, no matter what time of the year. And I, but I will always, always give them a variety because sometimes trolling, casting, doesn't matter. They want the smaller bait. Now, but the big bait really shines in a couple of situations. Again, if you have a lot of pike in the system, you can get rid of the pike. Remember this, when you're fishing Canadian waters, you want to get rid of pike. If you fish this bait, you're going to catch every pike in the system. And muskies probably too, but you're going to catch every bait, in the, every fish in the system. If you got too many pike and they're and they're and they're messing up your hooks, um, you're catching uh, accidental walleyes and smallmouths, and you just don't want to do that because you want to just focus on big muskies, and you don't want to be messing with with unhooking fish in prime spots. Then you want to go to the magnum. Okay, this is when when you know there's a big fish in a spot. Fish these magnums right off the bat. When I'm fishing a Canadian waters, I know have big pike and big muskies in them, even in cold fronts. Check out my episode on YouTube called How to Catch a Big One in the Cold Front. This has worked for me for big pike as well as big muskies and big pike in musky systems as well as, you know, dominant big pike waters. It's the fish, the biggest bait I've got in my box to just find that big fish, that's that that one big fish that's gonna be active that day. I seem to catch them on these, on these big minnow baits. And the big minnow bait, is a little different than the big blade only because the big minnow bait is a better cold front bait than the big blades more often than not. The big blades, the chase bait, <clears throat> you know, that's an aggressive, you're, you're, you're looking for a hot fish. That's a, you know, I'll just grab that. <clears throat> so we have the, 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 the discussion, we have the parallels here. Big blades, hot fish, good conditions. Most of the time, you know, that, that's what you need to really get fish to go on big blades consistently. Big minnow baits, they really do uh, produce in cold fronts because it's a jerk bait action. You know, it's it's a jerk pause, hang time kind of bait. So you can, you know, if you fish this bait tight to cover, bouncing bottom, hitting trees and cabbage weeds and, and cover with this bait all the time in cold fronts and with hang time in between, you can really trigger the biggest fish in the system in cold fronts with this bait consistently. One last thing we're going to talk about in downsizing before I leave you here today is low light or dark water. When I've got dark water, I immediately go up in silhouette. I go to bigger baits when I'm fishing dark water. Anytime fishing dark water, bigger baits because I want a bigger silhouette, okay? Nightfall, when I'm fishing at night, I've had better success overall at night fishing big baits. The double eights and big tens, for example, dynamite at night, big crankbaits, doom, 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 big profile, big wobble, big vibration, you know, these baits at night, they they just, they get it done. They give the fish an easy target. It's a big profile, big silhouette, an easy target. And, you know, <clears throat> I made a living make, catching these big fish at night with these style lures. So you definitely want to think when you're, when the, when the light wanes or with the water's dark, you're fishing dark water systems, done really well with bigger baits in dark water systems. So wrapping it up. Two situations, you know, that, that, that you want to consider the uh, downsizing and, and, and versus upsizing. Just, one is fatigue. If you're fishing, uh, you know, big baits, even if the fish are really going on big baits, but you're getting tired, your shoulders are sore, just simply downsize so you can stay in the game and stay effective. You know, what happens a lot of times when folks are into fishing big baits and they're on a good tens bite, for example, big crankbait bite, big jerkbait bite, is they get 
fatigued, so they start taking breaks or they start getting sloppy in their technique and they miss fish or they miss opportunities because they're not even fishing. If you downsize, you're in the game and you're still going after them, okay? And, and of course, the second thing is, is you upsize and downsize to test the fish's desire to hit, the fish's strike enthusiasm, it's, it's, it's aggressiveness. Cold fronts, fishing pressure, downsize generally, okay? Good weather, big fish, upsize. And you're in a situation where there's a lot of big, a lot of pike around, excuse me, a lot of snake northerns, hammer handle northerns. Uh, and you just want to sort through everything else and you just want to concentrate on catching a big fish on your trip. Go with the big bait. And then finally, when you go into a spot fresh on good conditions, you know, and you go into, and you pull into a spot and you know there's a big dog there and the conditions are right, give the big dog the big bait. Thanks for watching.